Hello, I'm about to, just to play, just to play five and a half hours. This is the start of a journey from Stockholm all the way to Nordkap in Norway, the furthest point north that you can go on the European mainland and well within the Arctic Circle. Okay, the fueling is underway. Let's see how much this costs. That came to just shy of 1,500 Swedish kroner, which in euros is... <laughs> the pain is too much for me to bear. One hour later. As soon as I arrived at this glorious destination, I discovered that their washing and drying facilities are free. So I popped in, put on my first load, went to get my second load. Somebody else has slipped in with their bag for life, stuffed with dirty laundry, dirty tramps. At least I'll get one load done and a fresh sheets. Hooray! Isn't this the life? And so the journey begins again tomorrow, heading north to Nordkap. Good morning. I'm just leaving Stokka. Normally I drive three and a half, maybe four hours, and then stop for one or two days to rest, recover, and work. And I'm thinking about changing that up today. According to Google Maps, it's a little bit more than 18 hours for a regular car to get from here in Stokka all the way to Nordkap. So that's going to be a little bit longer in a motorhome, probably more like 20 to 22 hours, and that's without stops. Now, obviously I'm not going to try and do that in one day, but I'm thinking about trying to put a serious dent in it if my energy is up to it. So let's see how I go. I'm two and a half hours in and about 160 miles down so far. Um, I've just stopped for diesel. I've used half a tank. If I'm going to go much further today, I might end up having to get two tanks full. That's what makes it expensive being on the road. Obviously, fuel is very expensive at the moment. Four hours in, 223 miles. But it's time to get something to eat. Now, I can either go to Ikea for meatballs or try out Max, which is a Swedish version of McDonald's. So I think I'm going to go to Max. It's a lot of coating and not enough chicken, but the bacon's good. So Max, for a chicken burger, you were not the max. Maybe I should have gotten a regular burger. Let's see how many more hours I can tolerate driving. Hello, I'm about five and a half hours into my drive. I've discovered that there's a giant roadworks up ahead and we've already been sitting here for 10 minutes and everyone is sort of very calm and uh, clearly not phased by that. So that must be relatively normal here. I suppose it's given me a chance to have a rest. Honestly, a woman got out of the first car, the passenger side. Let me show you. A woman got out of the first car, which is just a few cars ahead of me, and she's walked the whole way up that hill. She must have been expecting how slow it was going to be. Isn't that strange? We're in the middle of absolutely nowhere in rural Sweden, and it's lovely. There's trees, a lot of trees. Aha. Now there's a whole queue of traffic coming down this way, but they've been led by a little kind of van with flashing lights. There are hundreds of cars, lorries, motorhomes coming this direction. Just a couple of miles further along, and suddenly there was a reindeer in the middle of the road. Yes, this is turning into the never ending journey. Eight hours in since I left earlier this morning from Stokka. The road has been pretty pleasant to drive on. Not too busy, I say as it is super busy. And every so often there's these little kind of rest stops where you can get off the highway for a little bit and just stretch your legs or use the facilities. 
I've stopped just once for food. Coming up at about 400 miles done and almost eight hours into my journey today. I reckon I have about another hour or hour and a half left in me. Um, and then I'm gonna need to stop, make something to eat and rest up for the night. The temperature has been coming down a little bit. It's about 24 degrees now, somewhere in the high 70s, which is a bit more pleasant than how it was earlier. All right, let's get back into Barbara Bailey and get that extra hour under our belts. I've been waiting for that magic moment since I left this morning for the timer on Google Maps to tick down to under double digits in terms of hours to get to my eventual destination in the Arctic Circle, which is called Nord Cap. So we're just down to nine hours and 59 minutes. I've been on the road since 8.30. It's now 5.30, so that's nine hours already. And I've done just about 450 miles. That's probably enough for one day. So I'm going to stop here for a minute um, at this random bus stop. Oh, maybe I'm not allowed to stop here. But the road is very quiet, so it should be okay. And I'm going to see if I can find a campsite or even a wild camping site somewhere within the next 10 to 20 kilometers. Like a lot of camper van users, I use park for night in Europe. It's an app that shows both paid and free parking spots based on your location. It's really handy. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like there's a couple of options in the town of Overcalix, which is still a bit of a journey, but it might be worth going there. I'll check that out. I think it was on this trip that I really fell in love with rural Sweden. Even the road verge is stunning. And no traffic. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. I'll see you within about half an hour. So, that's good news. Um, there's a campsite in Overcalix, and it seems to have all the facilities, and it's 20 minutes from here. And it's in the right direction. So, let's get going. Morning. Barbara Bailey is full of these little bugs, which are famous, like midges. I might have to get bug spray. This is despite fly screens. It's me and a thousand bugs. I've only been here nine hours, 10 hours, something like that. I'm gonna get a cup of coffee, grab a shower, and really get on the road straight away, heading for Nordcap. Might seem a bit crazy not to sort of go slowly and stop every couple of hundred kilometers, and that's what I was doing, but at this rate, I won't be there before Christmas because I've got a hundred other things planned for the rest of the month. I might not be showing you too much of this campsite, but I'll show you what I can. This is the little service house where you drain off your grey water, that kind of thing. It strikes me that I'm going to try and make as much headway today as I can. It is going to be over 10 hours to get to Nordcap, so I may not make it quite that far. But if I could put a dent into the numbers of six or seven hours, I think that would be pretty good. The weather is due to worsen there from tomorrow. It's a shame because it'd be nice to be there in the sunshine. This is great crack, isn't it? You may be wondering why it's so sunny when I'm so far north. Well, there is a thing called the subarctic climate. Overcalix is in that part of Sweden, which gets very, very warm in the short summer. What you might not realize is that I'm about to cross the Arctic Circle and at eight o'clock in the morning, it's already 25 degrees Celsius. To combat today's very, very long drive of six to 12 hours, I'm going to stock up at co-op with some water and fruit snacks and jellies. Should I get the salty licorice? I have not been able to buy tonic water anywhere. Maybe I'll have to get some lemon. So they had no water. I spoke to the guy. He said they're having problems with delivery. They also didn't have any Schweppes tonic. They had very expensive tonic, which I didn't buy. So we're having lemon with the gin instead. Hello from the border between Sweden and Finland. 
I'd spotted on the map earlier that I was likely to cross into Finland for a little bit. Well, the border is right here. There's a great big river, but I think I'm going to be in and out of Finland a little bit today. Uh, there's no border guards. There's no officials around, anything like that, which I am expecting at the Norwegian border later today. So there's going to be a little bit of crossing back and forth. What I have to tell you is, in this part of the world, there's a lot of flies. It's horse flies and mosquitoes. My ankles have been nibbled. Ooh, and dragonflies, a very attractive one. Uh, my ankles have been nibbled to pieces at this point. All right, there you go, Finland. We love you. I think I've gone through the first part of the Norwegian customs area but I think the country crossing is yet to come. And just like that, I'm in Norway. Welcome to the latest country that I'm visiting in my motorhome. I've just stopped um, a few kilometers over the border into Norway. Um, let me try and explain. A lorry went past me super super fast it was going fast i wasn't particularly and uh it calls this window to open now there's four uh clasps that lock this window that's one of them the lip on this one broke off so it'll no longer go in obviously i stopped and tried to sort of jimmy rig it a little bit with this um with this bungee cord tied down here onto my seatbelt um, holder, which is not ideal, but that sort of has slipped. I'm going to have to come up with something else. I don't think I particularly have anything else that I can use to fix this other than trying to use a little bit of this extra strong double-sided sticky tape to kind of hold things down a bit better. And I have one more bungee cord and I could try and rig that up on the other side so at least there's a balance. I'm not quite sure what else I could do. Not on the road. This is the second major roadworks that I've come across in the past couple of days. The last one being in Sweden. And they send a car to bring all of the traffic down from the other side. Then it waits here, I assume until enough traffic builds up on this side to warrant taking us back over the gravel path. It ends up taking about 20 minutes each way. That windscreen is very, very dirty. Still four hours and 22 minutes to go. And this is not holding up all that well. It keeps opening and I keep having to stop. I wasn't sure if I was going to be driving for two hours or for 10 hours today. And as it'll turn out, I think it'll be more like 11. I am hoping to stay at Nordkap in the car park tonight. Here in Norway, and I think in Sweden, there's a thing called, I'll mispronounce it, but bear with me, called Allegemeins right, all man's right. It means that if you're not in anyone's way, that you can park pretty much anywhere on public land. You can't park outside somebody's private house, uh, of course. Well, while I'm waiting for this new roadworks drama to unravel, I do at least have the benefit of this view. After two days, 22 hours of driving at over a thousand miles since I left Stocka just a couple of days ago, I'm finally here at Nordkap, the most northerly point of Europe that you can drive to or walk to. You'd have to fly to go any further north to Svalbard. I was probably a little bit surprised at how many camper vans there are here. Apparently there's about 300 spaces in total and every single one of them is used up. Then again, the sun is shining right through the night and it's over 22 degrees still at 8.30 p.m. Nordcap is called Nordcap, well, not originally, 
It was named the North Cape by an Englishman called Stephen Burrough, who was the captain of a ship called the Edward Bonaventure, and he sailed his ship up here in search of the Northeast Passage in around 1553, whenever he spotted this cape, which, which had existed for hundreds of thousands of years previously, if not millions of years. Then he decided it would be called the North Cape. The name was, I suppose, Sticky. And so, over time, it became known not as North Cape, but as Nord Cap, which isn't strictly the translation of North Cape into Norwegian. The area became popular after the visit in 1873 of King Oscar II. And ever since, tourists have been coming here in their droves. As I speak at 8.30 at night, in the middle of June, it's very, very hot. And there's no shortage of people who are willing to spend their evening here, whether they're enjoying the restaurant back here or cooking something back in their motorhomes. Uh, here's how things work in terms of paying in. You used to have to pay to use the toll tunnel and for parking here, but actually, you're not charged for either anymore. Sufficient tolls were collected so that the toll tunnel was in fact totally paid for and no longer required a toll. Very sensible approach. And the powers that be decided that instead of paying to park, you might want to pay to see inside the visitor centre. There's a bit of a ruse here that if you don't want to visit the visitor centre, you can park for free. And that's what I've done because I didn't want to visit the visitor centre. But the operators made another decision, which was if you wanted to get into the restaurant, whether for dinner or for breakfast, you needed to pay the fee as well. But they've extended that to the cafe and to the shop. So you can't buy anything in the shop without paying the fee. That seems a little bit bonkers to me. Surely you want people to spend their kroners, euros, dollars and other currencies on buying something with Nordcap written on it from the gift shop. I suppose this is my second ever time wild camping. Everyone here is just parked in a car park with no electricity and I suppose that is wild camping. I've put my uh, refrigerator on gas. I've been trying to save my gas because I have no way of refilling it. Calor gas is almost impossible to refill anywhere except in the UK and Ireland. So I'm going to switch off. I'm ending today with a meal prep. Until the next episode, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.